Hey everyone, welcome back to my shop. Uh, this week I'm just going to knock out a table, a coffee table. This is a piece of pecan that I had, it's spalted, and I made a waterfall bench a while back, which turned out really nice, and this is about the last piece of it. Uh, but it's got quite a bit of warp in it, about three quarters of an inch on opposing ends, kitty corner. And it narrows down quite a bit to one end, so I thought what I would do is use hairpin legs, and that will make it sit flat. And I got the hairpin legs for $20 on Amazon, so does a coffee table need to sit flat? What are you doing with it? I mean, it's sitting, holding some magazines and a couple of remotes, probably. So I don't really think it needs to be flat. The answer is yes. A coffee table does need to be flat. And I'll tell you why at the end of the video, although I'm still not going to flatten this one. I've also got some shop updates. Uh, so let's knock out some of those. A while back, I made a maple table to sell in my booth. And uh, I said I was going to update you when it sold. And it took about a month to sell. And it was sitting right next to a nice black walnut table, very similar design. Uh, but it eventually did sell for $4.25. And the black walnut table right next to it was selling for $3.25. And it took longer to sell. So, Also a few videos back, I made a couple of dog beds out of whiskey barrels and donated them to the Humane Educational Society here in Chattanooga for their silent auction. And the auction is over now and both beds sold for just over $500. Uh, it was a little bit less than last year, but I think people just aren't spending as much at the moment. So I think it's still a pretty good result and I'm sure they were happy with the result. The place I used to sell my stuff, uh, my booth that I had in a uh, it was called Chattanooga Mercantile. Well, they moved further away. They had problems with their building, issues with the landlord. So they moved an additional seven or eight minutes away from their old location, but further away from me. I never really did that well. I was always just happy to cover the rent, which is about $300 a month. Uh, and I elected just not to move. And I brought the stuff I had there home. I will try to sell it on Facebook Marketplace, but I've also tried on there before and never really did that well. So I don't know. I don't know what to do. Uh, I, I will continue to try and sell it. Uh, maybe I'll just concentrate on doing shop improvements, but I like to build stuff. So uh, I'm sure I'll continue to build stuff and then try and sell it. I'm about to load the solar kiln up with some wood. Uh, I have a bunch of slabs in the barn that are uh, about air dry to about 28%, so they're about ready to go in. Uh, so one of the next few videos I do is going to be the summer kill temp, so look forward to that. I'm also thinking of changing the names of the goats from Bert and Ernie to like and subscribe. All right, back to this coffee table. I have been plugging away at this with some hand planes and a scraper just for a bit of practice, but the planes don't do so well on the epoxy. They take out chunks, and I don't want to I don't really want to mess that up. Uh, so I think it's time to pull out the power planer, knock down some of the really high spots, get the belt sounder out and go to town. I think I'll start on the bottom. Of course, I had a little void open up, so I'm just doing a little epoxy and hopefully it'll dry before this evening because it is about 90 degrees in here. So maybe it'll dry and I can sand this side tonight, otherwise I'll just sand the bottom outside. But I made a little silicone dam around it so I can overfill it a bit. So I worked my way up through the grits, starting at 60, then 80, 120, 180, then 220. And between each grit, 
I just get a lot of pencil marks on there just so I know when I'm, I'm done with that grit. We're pretty well sanded now. There's still some touch up to do, but I'm gonna work on the sides and I wanna start getting ready to machine the bottom. Normally for cleaning up the sides of the live edge, I would use a wire wheel and my die grinder, but I bought this little wheel uh, to do a restoration on a hand plane. And I'm gonna try that and just a regular drill because this is not made to go into the die grinder. It can't handle those high speeds. There's a little bit of work to do here with just some loose bits of bark or dirt. This wheel works pretty good. It's not nearly as aggressive as a wire wheel, but it cleans up the wood pretty nicely, but it's not gonna remove uh, any bark that's kind of holding onto the wood still. So I think it's uh, not a replacement for the wire wheel, but uh, in addition to the wire wheel. I'm ready for the CNC to cut out the pockets for the legs. I have them set where I want them to go, but I need to be able to program the machine on where to cut this one. So what I'll do is I will draw a rectangle, and these ones will be at the corners of the rectangles. The length of my rectangle is going to be from this end to the top of this one here, and this leg is set 45 degrees off of these two. So I'll set it in the machine, I will set the zero point here. I'll run it up on the Y axis. I will measure in to where this point is here. And then I will know where to draw the pocket for this leg. Clear as mud. I've got the table clamped down into the CNC. The bit is right here at the corner of where one of the legs are going to be. So now I'm just going to run it up on the Y axis and measure in to the point for the other leg. And now that I have this information, I can program the CNC to do all three legs at one time. So the first thing I'm going to do is come over here and set the zeros for the X and the Y to zero on the corner of where I want one of the hairpin legs to be. And then the highest point of this piece of wood is over here where the, where the second leg is going to be. And so I'm going to set the height of the bit over here. And then I'm going to run the program and hopefully it won't screw up. That is my height of the bit set, and my X and Y is set to zero. So all I need to do now is run the program. I ran the program twice because it didn't cut deep enough on this far leg here, uh, but now everything's got a nice flat surface to mount to. 
So I'm gonna take it off of here. Unfortunately, it's raining outside, so I can't take it outside and give it its final sanding. So I'm gonna set up my sander with the vacuum. I'll water pop the surface uh, or the top and give that its final sanding, and then I'll apply a finish. One of the reasons why I chose this piece of wood was all the spalting. There's quite a bit up here where there's a branch that used to come off and also at the bottom or this end of the slab. Now spalting is caused by a fungus that starts to occur when the, the log starts to rot away. And this particular log was kind of far along in that process. So a lot of the sap wood here on the sides is quite soft uh, and little bits uh, along the heartwood here as well. So to firm it up, I'm going to use tongue oil, uh, which will soak in and polymerize. And to thin it out quite a bit, because tongue oil is quite thick, I have put some turpentine in there. To thin it out, about 40-60 mix, and that's 60% of it would be the tongue oil. So I'm going to give it a good coat and let it soak in, and flip it around and do the other side. Over the course of a couple days, I put about four coats of 100% tongue oil onto the table and then I had to leave it for four or five days for that tongue oil to dry before I could put the polyurethane on it. And I used a clear polyurethane or a water-based polyurethane just so it wouldn't go any darker. And of course, I put about four coats on it and you always build up with a gloss before you put on your final if you want a matte finish. That way, it's, it's nice and clear up to that last finish, which is kind of matte, which has some agents in it, which dull the finish. I also have a cutoff here that I just used the water-based poly on. And you can see it's quite a bit lighter. That tongue oil, just like any oil, is going to add a bit of an orange and darken the wood up quite a bit. And here's the reason why I think a table needs to be flat. It's a pretty simple reason. It's just that I think people expect it to be flat. I would just, off the top of my head, say 90% of the people out there are looking for a flat coffee table. And they maybe don't look at the spalting or the figure in the wood. Either they like it or they don't. And if it's not flat, I think you're going for a much smaller part of the market. And the table's not that bad. It's got a little bit of cupping on this end and a little bit of twist throughout the length. So I could have flattened it, but there wouldn't be anything left if I did. It would be just too thin. You wouldn't get the effect of a slab and you know there'd be very little of a live edge left. So uh, I just left it the way it was. And let me know what you think in the comments down below. Does a coffee table need to be flat or a little warp is okay? I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button down below. And thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.